What do we have? Strawberries! <laughs> Guys, we have strawberries! Look at them! Why are they on the corner? It is, she spawned them here. I honestly think she just spawned. Maybe she's not done. Oh. Alright, we're gonna let her continue for a little bit. And then we'll take them out. Now, do these guys look smaller than the other guys? Or do they look the same? It's hard to tell. Hard to tell. But there they are. Strawberries. So what was that, day 27? Yep. Today is day 28. So the Ecuadorians have less of a gestation period than other crabs. There's quite a few in there. I honestly think she just found them in that corner. Because now they're kind of starting to move a little bit. It could be. Good job, Mama. You did it. Hi, babies. Oh, okay. She's still down there, so I'm going to leave her alone. They can stay in there for a little while at least. We have to do a water change on these guys. And then that's it for the morning. They already had their first breakfast. These guys have yolk, I can see it. In their bellies? Yeah, so this is my personal opinion. So this is day 27. We just started day 27. She just spawned these, you guys, because I came in at seven o'clock to do the feeding and I looked in here and there were no Zoe. So um, we came back at, what time is it? 7.30, eight. Eight, eight. Eight o'clock. Um, and Brooke looked and she was like, oh, they're here. And I was like, no way. Anyway, so she just spawned. So this is the morning of day 27. Um, I believe- No, it's day 28 today, isn't it? No. Oh, it's, it's day, day 27? 27. Okay. Yeah. So I believe though in nature, like she would have gone 28 days. I think just this, the extra like unusualness and naturalness of a birthing suite and us like moving her in and out because we were unsure of gestational age adding the mail and taking the mail out, like all of those things, I think maybe, you know, she's spawned at day 27, which is gonna be fine. They have, their, they're doing great, but I think they have more yolk than, you know, had she carried them one more day. So I believe that gestational age of strawberries is 28, which is similar to purple pinchers. So um, I think we can go off of that. Now we know. It's definitely not 22 days. So Ecuadorians are early. Yeah, that now we know it's hard to know when you've only had experience with another species that goes so short and then you're worried about losing those eggs. Yes, especially when we just had that happen yeah. with our Ecuadorian because we were thinking like oh, some people and ourselves included were like maybe we're not having success because we're prematurely spawning them by putting them in the birthing chrysal or in the actual chrysal or whatever. And so we're like, okay, well that's really possible, especially after we had that surprise spawn in the pool that was huge, right? And so we're like, maybe that's the case. So anyway, um, we thought maybe that was the problem, but I can tell you a hundred percent, like she's been in this birthing chrysal in and out. There's been some times we've taken her out since day 22 of gestation. And she has been in the water many times and she did not spawn. Yeah. So um, they definitely wait until it's time. Mm -hmm. So. Well, and keep in mind, she was in there since day 22, but she, she took uh, several days out. So she hasn't just been in there for a week. She's only been in there for about right. two Right, when we put her days. in there day 22, you guys, well, y'all have already seen. Yeah. Like she was not happy, we could tell, so we took her out. Yeah. Um, and then we put her back in on day 25. So she's just been there two days. So she's been in there for two days and she has been calm for those two days. We would not have left her in there if she was not calm. Yep. So, and she's had food and she's had fresh water and of course she has salt water. So she's had everything that she's needed. We put this towel over the front and we we um, covered the majority of the back of the chrysal with um, aquarium background because we thought maybe being able to see outside of this birthing suite into the tank and all of her tank mates was like part of causing the stress. So I do think that that helped a lot too. She felt very safe there. Um, so anyways, yay, we have straw babies, you guys. We forgot to open, like, hey guys. Crafts and Jewel Station, my name is Darcy, Brooks behind the camera, and this is day six of our um, Enigmas Gargantuous Zoe. And as you guys just saw, now day zero of our Strawberry Zoe. 
So we're so excited. Um, everything's going really well this morning. Our um, Enigmas looks great. So we are heading into the second shed day. This should be kind of the start of that. So we expect to see some deaths during the day. It's, shed day is just really hard on Zoe. Um, but for the most part, they look great. So we're gonna check salinity. We are going to do our morning water change in our experimental tank over here, the five and a half gallon. And then we're gonna check the salinity in the Chrysal. If the salinity is good, we're actually not gonna do a water change this morning because um, we've done one every day so far and it's, it's not really necessary. We've just been doing them because of the salinity. So hopefully mm -hmm. that is fixed. And then we're gonna take care of our straw babies and get them in this other Chrysal, which we've been saving for them. So yay. Hey guys, so this is gonna be a very interesting part of the vlog because I'm actually, <laughs> self vlogging this and I don't really usually do that and so I'm sorry if it's shaky I'm sorry if I don't have the best angle or whatever all that stuff is but Brooke and Faith are both out for the rest of today and some of tomorrow so it's just me holding down the fort and our straw decided to spawn which is so exciting that's her right there but anyway so I have to get everything ready to put her um, Zoe in the Chrysal however um, you know, we did a lot with the Enigmas on the other side to get the spray bar working just right to get the flow and like the circulation of the water just right. And so now I need to work on the um, other side of the Chrysal for the straw babies. So anyways, that's what we're going to call them the straw babies, but strawberry Zoe. But anyway, so um, let me show you guys kind of what the what's going on. All right, so this bar right here is too long. It's bringing the spray bar way out here, far away from this edge. Okay, so see this gap right here? That's too much of a gap. We need this to be right up against the edge of the Chrysal. And the only way that I can do that is to shorten this bar here. And so I cut a new piece that will go over there to bring the bar closer. So anyway, so I'm gonna have to switch this out and then play a little bit with the angle of the water spraying um, to make sure that we're getting the correct circulation in there before it can bring baby straws over. So hopefully that made sense, but that's what I'm gonna be working on right now. Um, we already did our second feeding for today. Um, so you can see our feeding schedule. We're already through with our seven and 9 p.m. And also I just, um, this was full just a second ago, I siphoned back in the clean salt water from our holding tank for our experimental five and a half gallon. Also, um, just confirmed, let me see if I can show you guys. I just confirmed Rachel's eggs. She's underneath the, the wheel there. I don't know if you guys can see her. Anyway, we'll put some, we'll put some pictures in of Rachel's eggs, but she um, confirmed eggs with an Ecuadorian now. Um, so that's two Ecuadorians carrying eggs confirmed. I do suspect we have a third, but her shell is so tiny, it's really hard to see in there, but I'm gonna keep looking, cause that's what I do. Anyways guys, I'm gonna get started working on this Chrysal so that we can move our straw babies over. Like you can see Mama up there on the platform, that means I believe she is finished. She's completed her spawn. And we have a lot of straw babies in here. So, you can see them, look, hi babies, so many babies, look, they kind of have like a strawberry tint to them, oh my goodness, so normal, <laughs> alright, so there you go, that's what I'm going to be working on, see you guys in a little bit, alright. So I am gonna go ahead and get our strawberry mama out of the birthing suite. She has climbed up here on the platform all on her own. So that tells me that she has finished with her spawn. There she is. Such a good mama. Like she's very calm. She had, looks like she had some good dinner last night. She was eating on her apple and grape over there. Anyway, so um, I'm gonna check her shell real quick with a flashlight just to make sure that she doesn't 
still have a few eggs in there that she hasn't spun, but I'm pretty sure she's finished. She spent a good amount of time on the edge of the bridge. Look like just really cleaning out her shell. So um, that's what I'm gonna do real quick. And then I'm gonna let her out to go and get a good um, breakfast and just rest from all her hard work. You can see right here this is the new piece that I just replaced it's much shorter which brought this spray bar much closer um, I wish I could get a little bit closer even yet and I might work on that for next breeding season but you can see right here that the chrysal itself is holding it back so I would have to actually modify this a little bit more which takes a heat gun and all kinds of or a heat knife actually um, and so I don't, <laughs> I don't have time for that right now but this is really close and um, it actually helped to balance the other side out as well. And so the flow for these guys is actually even better. I'm more happy with it now. I mean, it was good before, but I'm like, wow, yeah, that looks great. And then over here, I have some string that I put in here to kind of monitor and see if the spray bar was in the right place. And as you can see, those little red strings are making their little circles around the chrysal, which is exactly what you want. And so I'm pretty excited. All right, so that is the modification on the Chrysal. And I also, you can see the breathing suite right here. I already took out the little platform with the ladder, put in a bubbler there for them, um, took out Mama. And so she went straight for a high protein snack, PB Suey from Just Real Crabs. Um, and now she's kind of just de-stressing in there. Um, just resting and so anyway we're gonna get the baby Zoe over here in the Chrysal so let's get started with that. All right it is time to get the strawberry Zoe in their Chrysal. So I actually just took the birthing suite right out of the tank and brought it over here next to the Chrysal. I have it sitting on buckets so that it has because of gravity we we're gonna siphon the babies into the Chrysal over here so they had to be higher than the Chrysal. And um, so that's what we're gonna work on is getting these guys safely into the Chrysal. Um, so let's get started with that. I'm a little nervous about this one. Here we go, I'll check in with you guys. All right, so it went really pretty well. Um, siphoned almost all the water right into the Chrysal and uh, so we just went right in. As the water went down further, I just kind of tipped the tank up so that you know it would gather more in the bottom and just kept going to the very end and then when we got to the end i used a um, turkey baster and got some salt fresh salt water and uh, squirted it down just to make sure that we weren't getting stuck along the sides of the tank and whatnot um the last bit the last bit of the um water left in the birthing suite i did put into these two jars right here just because there was quite a bit of debris at the bottom. I'm not really sure where that came from since she was the only thing uh, Anyway, so I am just going to pipe that any Zoe that didn't get sucked up by the siphon that was left kind of in that very, very bottom part of the tank. And then they'll all be in the, in the um, tank. But let me show you these babies. Look at the straw babies. Isn't that amazing? So many, you guys. Look at them all. So you can see at the bottom of this chrysal, we have some live sand. And the reason I put that down there is because the Zoe really seemed to be eating it in our experimental tank over here. So I just put a really thin layer. We, if it's not working out, it's easy to siphon. So we're gonna kind of just keep an eye on it and see if they stop by and pluck stuff out of there. Seems like they are already, so. Anyways, 
Um, looks like we have a good flow. So the spray bar is working really well. And look at, they're kind of like a pink color, like salmon. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. Hi, straw babies. Oh, wow. So cool. All right, so I'm gonna get busy on these two jars right here. And then I have to clean up the birthing suite um, and get it ready for Ecuadorian because we have confirmed two female Ecuadorians that have eggs. And so it's not quite time yet. I mean, we have probably another week or so at least. I have to look back at the calendar, but anyway. So it is very busy over here in the Crab Central Station um, breeding room. Super exciting. See you guys later. All right, so I noticed as I was cleaning out those last two jars that there was some kind of egg sac membrane and a few eggs that did not hatch. So I put them in this little jar right here with a bubbler to see if maybe we can get them to hatch. Um, so I'm gonna leave them here for a little bit and see what happens. We made it to the end of day six. I say we, I mean me, because I'm the only one that was here today. It was really quite a busy day, but that's all right. When we made these plans for the girls to be gone, we figured this would be the day that the strawberry site was spawned. So we kind of jinxed ourselves. But anyway, everybody is um, happy in the Chrysal, and I did water changes today. Um, we got our water test kit, and so I tested all the water in the Chrysal and in the five and a half gallon experimental tank. Um, we had a little bit of, you know, some trace ammonia in this uh, tank here, which we figured happened because it's not filtered. That's the whole idea behind having to do two water changes every day in there. Um, I do think that we have started our second shed, and so so we, um, well, not all of them, but the um, Enigmas Gargantuas have started transitioning into stage three. Um, I still think we've got another day of sheds ahead of us, but I saw quite a few in here, which also could be adding to a little bit of the ammonia. But the Chrysler actually looks really good, so the filter is doing its job in there. Um, like, very trace ammonia, like zero, very, very little. So, that was really super good. And um, the strawberries aren't able to do much with them. Um, they still have some egg yolk left, so we didn't even have to feed them today, just had to get them set up in the Chrysler. And um, things are going well. They're moving along just fine. So that's pretty exciting. Um, what else? What else do we got for you guys today? Um, I think that's about it, actually. We did all the feedings, did the water changes, got the strawberries in, got everything cleaned up, cleaned up the birthing suite. Um, so, yeah, behind me, under the wheel, um, our strawberries are moving again. So, um, who knows if they'll be successful or not. The same thing happened with Monica and Gunther last summer. They got their spawn and then that same night they needed it again and she had eggs the next day. So crazy. There must be some kind of pheromone or hormone or something released. But um, it only had been that um, second time last summer with Gunther and she had those two spawns. So uh, must maybe be what they do in nature. I'm not sure. But Anyway, so that's, that's going on behind me currently as well, and I think that's really all I have for you guys today, and we will catch you up on 